talk about separable extensions. So, this is a special property of field extensions, but before we talk about the extensions themselves, let us talk about uh, separable polynomials. So, this is a notion which you have uh, seen already. This is just the, the idea of having repeated roots or not having repeated roots. So, let me define it formally. Let f be a polynomial with coefficients in a field capital F. Let us say f is in fx. Uh, we say f is separable, this polynomial f is separable if it does not have repeated roots, if it has no repeated roots in any field extension of capital F. Okay, so in any field extension of k of f. Okay, and of course, to, to check if, so suppose you are given a polynomial f, to check if it is separable or not is, um, well, where is the best place to check? If you, for example, take uh, k to be, let us say, the splitting field of f. So, suppose k is the splitting field of f or you take k to be, let us say, the algebraic closure of the base field capital F, um, definitely over which the, the polynomial F splits. Okay? So, in fact, you can take this or any field extension, any field extension of F over which F splits completely into linear factors. Okay? So, uh, it is sort of enough to check. So, uh, you know, to, to check if a polynomial is separable, you just have to check whether it has repeated roots in this particular extension. Okay? And, uh, well, why is that? Because, of course, here f splits as a product of x minus, so into distinct, but well, not necessarily distinct, into linear factors completely. And if no two of the alphas are equal in k, then the, uh, you can be sure that you will not have repeated roots of f in any other field extension. Okay? And um, well, what's the, uh, well what, what have you seen before about uh, polynomials with repeated roots? So, recall we have a criteria, uh, well there are two different criteria that you have seen in the earlier lectures. So, to check if a, a polynomial is separable, you do not really need to uh, go to some, you know, splitting field and check if you have distinct roots there. You can just do this checking without leaving the base field at all. Okay, and that's the proposition or the theorem. So recall the derivative criterion. Recall uh, the earlier proposition. It says that f has no repeated roots, which in our new terminology, f is separable. If and only if the uh, GCD, if you take the polynomial f and its derivative, okay, so what what is called d of f, if the the greatest common divisor of these two is just one, okay, if these two are relatively prime, okay, i.e. So in this case, I mean this notation is the ideal generated by f and df, um, but you can also think in terms of just elements; they don't have any common factors, i.e. f and its derivative df are relatively prime. Okay, and this is an if and only if condition. So, recall the derivative here is the formal derivative of a polynomial defined by saying the derivative of x power n is just nx to be n minus 1. Okay, so, I sort of encourage you to go back and look at the, the earlier lectures on repeated roots to, to recall the definitions and properties. Okay. Now, this was the, the uh, um, criterion which tells you when a polynomial is separable. You just have to check if the polynomial and its derivative have a common factor or not. And this you can just do in the base field. Right? This is just a calculation in f of x. Just compute the GCD by say the Euclidean algorithm. Okay? And also recall uh, a second way of doing this. So, we will not really use this, but recall there was this notion of a discriminant. 
discriminant of f. So this was defined as, well, you can just take the product of the various roots, let's say i not equal to j or i less than j and take the square of the, the roots of the polynomial. So of course, as written, this is something which you can compute in the splitting field or the algebraic closure because that's where all the roots are going to be present. But the, I mean, a priori, the answer is in k, some splitting field, but uh, we know that the, the um, function that we have constructed here is a symmetric function of the roots and therefore, this is actually some, will turn out to be some polynomial in the coefficients. It's a polynomial in the coefficients of the given polynomial of x, okay. And uh, here is the second criterion for separability. Recall f is separable, meaning it has all distinct roots is the same as saying this uh, discriminant delta does not vanish. Okay, so delta is not zero. And this delta of f, this is some particular element of the base field, okay, which turns out to be some polynomial function of the coefficients. Okay, so this is another way of computing um, or determining if f is separable just by staying within the, the field of definition, you need not go to some uh, splitting field. Okay, and of course, you you probably seen a bunch of examples back in the earlier lecture when repeated roots were discussed. So, here are some uh, quick examples. If I take fx to be x cubed minus 1, for instance, and I think of my base field as the field of rational numbers. So, this is a separable polynomial because let us say I, I go up to the algebraic closure. So, this is the um, expansion over let us say the complex numbers. Okay, or you can take the algebraic closure of q, it does not matter. So, once you pass to some extension field and where it splits completely, there you can check. There, if it has distinct roots, then this is a separable polynomial. Okay? So, here is an example of a separable polynomial and um, here is a non-example of a separable polynomial, the very same polynomial, but considered over the finite field f3, where as you know, it just splits as x minus 1 the whole cube. Okay? So, this is the expansion over f3 and of course, this is not separable because the root 1 is repeated thrice. Okay, great. So, here are some examples and non-examples and uh, what will be important for us is again a fact that was um, proved during the earlier lecture on uh, repeated roots recall the following proposition as well or theorem which says gives you yet another um, criterion for separability but this time for irreducible polynomials okay so let f in fx be an irreducible polynomial be an irreducible polynomial in this case separability is much easier so, let me state it as f uh, is separable, f is a separable polynomial if and only if its derivative is not 0, it is not the 0 polynomial. Okay, recall the df, the derivative is again a polynomial in fx. So, what we are saying is that this, this polynomial df, so this is recall some polynomial in fx, this is not the 0 polynomial. So, that is equivalent to separability, non-vanishing of the derivative. Okay? And uh, recall this was proved um, sort of by uh, showing that, I mean by using the previous criterion that separability is the same as uh, f and df having a common factor, but df is strictly small, is of strictly smaller degree than f and so they cannot really have a common factor. I mean if f is reducible, if f is irreducible, the only uh, factors of f are 1 and f. Okay? So, if df has strictly smaller degree, there is really no way it can share a common factor with f unless df is the 0 polynomial. Okay? So, that is how uh, this was proved. 
Okay, so again here I'm I'm referring back to the the earlier lecture, and uh, corollary is that in characteristic zero, if the characteristic of the field is zero, then uh, the derivative can't vanish. So then every reducible polynomial is automatically separable. Every irreducible polynomial f is automatically separable. Okay, why is this? Well, if you write out a polynomial, so when can the, I mean the derivative can never vanish, right? So proof, uh, if the polynomial f looks like a0 plus a1x and so on, plus some, let's say it's a degree d polynomial, a d x to the d, then the derivative df of x just looks like a1 plus 2a2x plus etc etc d a d x to the d minus 1 and the only way in which this can be 0 is if a1, a2, a d are all 0. Okay, And here observe we are using the characteristic 0 hypothesis because uh, saying that some multiple of a2 is 0 is saying is the same as saying that a2 is 0. Okay, So observe that the derivative can be 0 if and only if the following equations are true a1 is 0, 2a2 is 0, 3a3 is 0 and so on. But then this is the same as saying a1 is 0, a2 is 0, a3 is 0, etc. Okay? Because you can sort of cancel. So for example, 3a3 is 0 means a3 is 0. Yes, the field has characteristic 0. If the field had characteristic 3, for example, then 3a3 is 0 is always true. You can't conclude that a3 is 0 from there. Okay, so now uh, where does this this uh, leave us? This says that this, this is the same as saying that f is a constant. Okay, this is like our classic statement from, from say analysis which says that the only uh, polynomials with derivative 0 are just the constants. Okay, this holds over characteristic 0 fields. But of course, a constant can't be reducible. Okay, if f is a constant, but then uh, constants are not irreducible, they are units. So, this is uh, observe in this case f is not irreducible. Okay, so the, the conclusion that we wanted if f is irreducible, then it is automatically separable. Okay, so that is what we have managed to show because if f is irreducible, then it cannot be a constant. Okay, so that is a nice fact for um, characteristic 0 that irreducibility automatically implies separability. Okay, irreducible polynomials must have non-repeated roots. Whereas, the, you know, the same thing is not true over characteristic p as we just said. So, let us now consider the, the next situation which is what if f has characteristic p if characteristic of f is a prime p. So, p is some prime number here. Okay, so, this is the positive characteristic case, then this fact is no longer true. Okay, then it is no longer true that uh, irreducibles are separable, irreducible polynomials are automatically separable. Okay, so one has to be a little careful in arbitrary characteristic and here is an example to show that one has to be a little careful when dealing with the case of finite characteristic. So, let us take the field f to be the following. So, I will take f3, but uh, I will also adjoin this, this variable t to it. Okay, so, what is f3 of t? So, t is just some uh, indeterminate here. So, what is f3 of t? This is the set of all rational functions. So, this is the field of rational functions in the variable t, which means it is polynomial divided by polynomial. So, what are a and b? They are both polynomials with coefficients in f3 and the denominator is not 0. So, b is not the 0 polynomial. Okay? So, this is the field of rational functions. So, it is a field and it is in fact 
still a field of characteristic 3. It is a field of rational functions. Okay, so, if you take any, any uh, element of this field and you take 3 times that, then that is just 3 times a over b, but 3 times a is just the 0 polynomial. So, f3 of t is still of, of characteristic 3. Okay, so, it is a field of rational functions over the field f3 and this is still a characteristic 3 field. So, I should say f is a characteristic 3 field. Now, I claim that in this uh, characteristic 3 field, you can find irreducible polynomials which have repeated roots. Okay, what is an example? So, here is the simplest example. Let us take f of x to be the polynomial x cubed minus t. Okay, so recall t is now you know it is an element of the field, it is an element of f. Okay, so this is a polynomial of degree 3. x is the variable, t is like a constant. So, uh, well, claim number 1 that f is irreducible. Let us check this. So, if f is reducible, then what can you conclude? Okay. So, proof of uh, irreducibility, if not, then uh, well, it is a it is a polynomial of degree 3. So, it has to split into two pieces. Let us say it splits, it is not irreducible. Then at least one of the two factors must have degree 1. Okay. In other words, then there exists. So, so how does f split then f splits like this. Let us say f of x must split as some degree 1 piece into some possibly degree 2 piece. Okay. So, degree of g is 2 let us say. So, g may or may not be reducible. But I know for sure there is one linear term and what is alpha here for some alpha in the base field. The base field here is f3 of t. Okay. In other words, alpha looks like some a of t by b of t some rational function b is not 0 and so f of alpha is 0 therefore, right? because f of x is x minus alpha into g x. If you plug in alpha equal to 0, what you are going to get? And if you plug in alpha for x, you are going to get 0. here. This just means that alpha is a root of the original equation. So, alpha cubed equals t. Therefore, this is going to give us a contradiction. This is like saying the polynomial a, a t divided by b t, this rational function, when you take this and you cube it, it just gives you t. Okay. Now, why is this not possible? Because, well, let us rewrite it. It is a t cubed equals t times b t cubed. Okay. And if you sort of see what these, uh, these two, two sides look like, well, a t cubed a is well, if you cube a polynomial, what do you get in this case? Well, a polynomial looks like this, right? a t is some a 0 plus a 1 t and so on. If you cube it, it is like the calculation we just did. I mean, we talked about this polynomial x cubed minus 1. So, a t cubed is just going to give you, uh, well, a 0 cubed plus a 1 t the whole cubed plus a 2 t square the whole cubed and so on. And then there will also be lots of cross terms, right. So, when you do this expansion, you are also going to get uh, 3 a naught square a 1 t plus 3 whatever a naught uh, something and so on. But all the cross terms are all going to look like 3 times something, okay. So, these are, these are going to be the cross terms in the expansion and they are all 0. Why? Because this is recall everything is over the field uh, f3, f3 of t. So, you know or you, you can say that uh, as we just observed 3 times uh, any element of f is just 0. f the, the field f3 of t is of characteristic 3. So, these terms are 0 in a. Okay. So, the element a t cubed in the field f just works out to be uh, something like this. So, this is a naught cubed plus a 1 cubed t cubed and so on. So, it is a polynomial which only involves uh, the powers uh, you know t power 0, 3, 6, 9 and so on this is a t cubed sorry. Well, the same thing holds for b t cubed. It is again going to involve only 
q1 qt q and so on but now i am going to multiply it by t because what i know is that at cubed is supposed to equal t times bt cubed okay now you can see the contradiction because now the right hand side has powers of t which look like t power 1 4 7 and so on so this is all powers of t congruent to 1 modulo 3 and so these two can never be equal Okay, there's just no way these two can be the same answer. Okay, unless of course all the a's and b's are zero, but we have assumed that b's are not zero. Okay, so that argument concludes uh, the proof of irreducibility of this uh, polynomial f. Now, uh, it's easy to see that f is not separable. Why? Well, we already have a criterion for separability. Uh, if you have an irreducible polynomial here, so let's go back and look at our our proposition so what does the proposition say if you have an irreducible polynomial then checking separability is very easy it's separable if and only if its derivative doesn't vanish okay so we have already shown that this polynomial is irreducible x cube minus t let us show that its derivative vanishes so let's compute its derivative it's just 3x square okay recall the t is a constant here right so well the derivative is just 3x square but that's of course just 0 in uh, the polynomial ring f of x okay so the derivative here is just 0 okay? so what does that imply that says that uh, this polynomial is not separable it implies the polynomial f of x Okay, which is exactly what we claim. So, if you have uh, a field of finite characteristic, then irreducible polynomials do not automatically become separable. Okay, but there is this uh, one sort of nice exception or a, or a special case when this holds. So, uh, those are what are called perfect fields. Okay, 